Welcome everybody. My name is Jimmy Bowman and I'm the North American Marketing Manager for Yellowfin. I'm very excited to have you all on the call today because our partner Quantify will be showing you their clever take on using Yellowfin for population health and management. Uh, who doesn't love to see good BI in action? Decision science really is a thing of beauty. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to hand it off to Quantify's data science consultant, Adam Hammond. All right. Thanks, Jimmy, uh, for kicking us off. I um, appreciate the introduction. Um, as you mentioned, uh, my name is Adam, and I'm a data science consultant with Quantify. Uh, we're here today uh, to show you our population health solution that we've implemented in Yellowfin. Um, so before we get into the details um, and into the demo itself, what I wanted to do is just walk through a brief agenda of what we'll be covering today. And uh, the first is we, we want to set the context around the situation. What really prompted us to take a look and uh, recognize that population health management was a necessity and want to implement it in an effective manner. Uh, second, we'll talk about Quantify, um, so who we are as an organization. Uh, the third and biggest chunk of it will, of course, be a demonstration around the population health management solution we have. Uh, beyond that, we'll look at uh, one main uh, provider where we've implemented this population health solution and a, a testimonial around that. And then lastly, we'll leave plenty of time, um, probably around 20 minutes for questions at the end. On that note, uh, also feel free as the presentation is going to type questions into the chat box. And if as we're moving through uh, the dashboards, there's a good place to answer that question, I'll go ahead and comment there. If not, we'll be sure to touch on them all at the end. So with that said, um, I'll go ahead and move on to the big challenge uh, that we we have right now in healthcare. And that's essentially this accelerating shift to value that has been implemented. So between this year 2016 and two years from now, 2018, we're seeing big shifts in payment models. So one is from an alternative payment model perspective in terms of bundled payments and accountable care organizations. And the other is in terms of fee for service linked to quality and value payments. So whereas previously, where payments were completely for service. So you got X amount of dollars if you um, saw someone for a general checkup. Now there are also incentives tied to the quality and value received. So because of these two shifts and healthcare is becoming more patient centric rather than service centric, where can data science make a difference? And one of the two areas that we really noted uh, and that we we want to present to you today is to create insights to better manage your population health. So that led us into try to find the, to try to find the best solution possible and the best way to represent this information and led us to uh, Yellowfin to create some great BI. So before we get into the demonstration, I just wanted to review really quickly how we view population health analytics. So in our opinion, every healthcare encounter contains critical data points that we need to be able to use in order to improve outcomes and reduce costs for our patient population. Our goal in, in putting forth this solution was to be able to take in all of those critical data points that we already have access to and build insights that were not readily apparent from them. So the solution will help answer a few critical questions such as who are my high-risk members most likely to need case and care management, what chronic conditions are prevalent in my patient population, and where does the demand and supply differ between the needs of the patient population and the available physicians. And then lastly, and perhaps most importantly, who are driving up costs? Uh, frequently we see that, you know, 1% of patients can account for up to 30% of the costs, and moreover, each year, these are not the same culprits that are that 1% of patients. About 45% of them switch out year after year, so we constantly need to stay on top of the data that we have and identify those, that most critical set of patients. And answering tough questions like these, uh, particularly in population health, is truly part of the reason uh, Quantify exists. So we are a decision science and big data solutions company. And what we've realized is that while most organizations now have a wealth of data available to them, their ability to realize the potential of that data is limited. And then that becomes an adoption gap from using that data uh, 
to, for using that data to drive decisions. So ultimately, we want to help clients develop intelligent products, find and retain high-value customers, improve operating efficiencies, and reduce risk by mining and harnessing these meaningful patterns. The one you'll see most frequently today is uh, our goal in reducing risk to the patient, uh, patient population by identifying key patients that are responsible for high cost or have a high risk assessment. Our core capabilities that allow us to do this are, one, we're fearless of data. We're well-versed in, in big data and cloud platforms, so we can take data in, in any size, any shape, any type. The second is data engineering. So this is the work behind the scenes that allows us to spend less time collecting the data and more time uh, analyzing the data and realizing insights from the data, which is really the critical part. Um, third is there's a machine learning element. So once we have the data shaped, we can use what we know from the past to help, to help predict what may happen in the future. And then lastly, we want to represent all of this uh, work that we've done in terms of shaping the data and making it usable for insights in anything we've done in machine learning in an easy-to-use BI layer. And that's where we, we lean on Yellowfin very, very heavily. And that's what you'll see in the solution today. So with that said, um, I'd like to jump straight into the demonstration. So we'll exit here uh, from the, the storyboard, which is a presentation layer within Yellowfin. And I'll jump straight into the dashboards that we have. So once again, um, as we go through the dashboards, I wanted to highlight that our population health solution is focused on answering three main questions. So one, what is the cost and utilization of healthcare within my patient population, referring to the particular provider or institution we're looking at? Second, how much do high cost encounters contribute to the cost of care? And where do they contribute to the cost of care? And third, we want to look at what are the top cost and utilization drivers overall. And we feel that what we prepared based off of claims files and member roster files helps to address these questions in an easy and intuitive manner. So overall today, there are a few different styles of dashboards that we'll be looking at. So there are strategic, analytical, and operational dashboards. So this overview dashboard that we have up right now is our strategic dashboard. It provides an executive view of the data. It's a broad perspective and just gives the high-level insights with the ability to drill down where needed. Next is an analytical dashboard where we'll be taking a look at member risk. So there we'll highlight how patient risk builds up and who our highest risk patients are. And lastly, from an operational perspective, we'll take a look at the patient dashboard. So here we can instantly see the most granular patient level data and begin to make quick decisions. The other there are dashboards that you see in terms of top diagnoses, providers, and chronic conditions. We may get into, but they're really just recapping this overview dashboard from a different perspective. So in this overview dashboard, we have four key components. Um, so initially, we have our summary reports that give the highest level information. So it gives our total number of members. We can understand the breakdown of those members in terms of gender and in terms of language. And it gives a summary of our claims and total paid amount. In addition, we can note the difference between active members and roster members, as if there's someone who has not been active for a period of time that may already be someone that we want to look into for further insights. Next, we have a basic tabular report. This is for individuals who are comfortable with Excel. They're allowed to click and drill into this report as well, which we'll get into in a moment. But it's really easy to identify by year now, going one step down from the overall data, what those claims and paid amounts were, along with the members. And then lastly, the, perhaps the most critical metric to managing, uh, managing your patient population, which is per member per month cost. Lastly, uh, we have visual reports within Yellowfin. And these are intuitive visuals that make it easy for uh, individuals and users of the dashboards to make their own insights from seeing the data. So this one is referencing cost categories, and we'll get into it uh, here in a moment. 
before we get into any of the individual reports, I also wanted to mention that Yellowfin gives the ability to filter data. So right now we're looking at this great aggregated picture of all of the data that we have access to that's in our system. However, immediately if we wanted to isolate a particular year, let's say, and a particular claim type, if we only wanted to look at medical claims in 2014, we could select those and then click go on the filters. All reports within the dashboards will recalculate to those parameters that you have set within the filters. So now we only see that it's looking at just 2014 here. In addition, as mentioned before, many of these reports allow you to go from the highest level to the lowest level of data. So one thing we can do, for example, one of the questions we wanted to answer was see who our high cost members were within the patient population. In this last visualization, what we can see is in the line is the number of patients that fit that paid amount bucket, and the blue bar represents the overall paid amount. So in 2014, there were 32 members that each had paid amounts of over $50,000, and in total, those summed up to about $2,500. So these 32 patients are truly a large portion of the cost for that year 2014. Now, if we wanted to see who those individual patients are, we could easily drill into the report. And I apologize, let me reset these filters really quick. So once again, we were looking at uh, medical data in the year 2014. And when we select go, we'll be able to see all of the individual members that meet that particular cost category we were looking at. So here with a couple clicks of the mouse, we have our 32 members that are the reason for a high cost in 2014. If we wanted to go one step farther and see behind that individual member what the reason is, we can simply click on their member ID and go one step farther into the data. Now for this particular member, we can see their entire claim, basically all claims they've had over the time period of the data set that we have. If we go and simply sort by paid amount, we can quickly determine for this particular member what was the reason behind the high cost. And we notice that it's this particular diagnosis code which relates to sickle cell anemia. We can also take this and we can begin to see how the patient's doing if they've been involved in case or care management by looking at the cost of their most recent encounters with the system. So what we can do is take the beginning of this diagnosis code. We can simply filter for it here. So we're only looking at cases that involve that sickle cell anemia, which was really their high cost factor. Once we do this and select these cases, click go. Now we've filtered to just that diagnosis code, it's looking at the sickle cell disease. And we can come here to the end date and say that we want to sort by the descending so we can see their most recent encounters first. So now what we see is that for most of their counters, most of their encounters since May 2014, and this data runs all the way through May 2015, it's been relatively well managed. That was really their last big blow up at a $23,000 encounter. After that, we don't see anything at all greater than $150. So we've already begun to work from the highest level of data to the lowest level of data and been able to determine you know, how one patient's encounters are affecting the system as a whole. Now, once we're done exploring the data at the most granular level, sometimes you go down a rabbit hole, but it makes, Yellowfin makes it very easy to get back out to the homepage by clicking the dashboard link and it brings you straight back to the overview. The next piece that I'd like to show here uh, within the overview tab is we showed a, a drill through path, which is one that's been pre-selected for the user. So we pointed to the next reports. The other option is a drill anywhere path, and this exposes the entire data model to the user. So let's say for 2014, rather than looking at the patients, we wanted to identify what the highest cost diagnosis was. So we can easily come in here in 2014, they were still on ICD-9 mappings, and look at the long diagnosis description. And what will happen is this particular report uh, will filter that year, that 2014 that we selected, 
and break it apart by that diagnosis description. Now, if we come in and expand the report, we once again have the ability to sort the information. So really quickly, we can see what our highest paid amount was in terms of description. And it looks like it actually is some uncategorized data points from our claims data set. After that is something that we'd expect to see, which is a routine general medical examination. So that had, you know, by far the most number of claims uh, for something that's highlight, for something that's not um, a blank description, as well as the highest paid amount. Now to go one step farther, we can keep drilling in and keep going down this, uh, this rabbit hole. And we can go in and we can say, okay, what day do people come in most frequently to get those general medical examinations done? So if we take a look at the different days that we have, we see that it seems like Tuesday is the most popular day for people to come to the doctor for their general checkups, uh, followed by Monday. And then as you get to the end of the week and weekend, it starts to tail off in terms of both claims, paid amount, and members uh, that come on those particular days. So it's very easy to quickly identify what types of diagnosis may be affecting your patient population more than expected, and also the utilization of the physician's resources based on that particular diagnosis. So if we wanted, rather than looking in general diagnosis, you could look in something more specific and see the same type of information around it. All right, that being said, I will go back to the dashboards. And we'll move on to our analytic, analytics dashboard. So now that we've highlighted uh, some overall views of the patient population, we've seen that you can go from the highest level to the lowest level information. But the requirement there is to have a particular question and need to go one patient at a time. Here in the analytics dashboard, we allow you to view multiple patients at one time and then be able to own in on the, the specific patient that you want to look at. So the goal of this dashboard uh, is to basically assess the risk of each individual patient along with the patient population as a whole. Because what we've recognized is that paid amounts, as, as mentioned before, aren't the greatest indicator of who will be responsible for those highest paid amounts in the future. However, adding risk score to that gives us a better indication of who may have a high paid amount in years to come. So looking at our patient population, I mean, we can quickly see that the average risk score is 0.84. Um, and we can see that, you know, our total members at risk as a percentage of the patient population are 1,700. And this risk score is based on um, a CMS model that takes into account gender, age, and the, di and the underlying diagnosis codes of the claims. So from that information about each patient, what we can do is compare and contrast the risk score and the paid amount. And some interesting findings come out here because what we'd expect to see is some sort of line that goes up and to the right. As the risk score increases, our total paid amount for that patient also increases. But in this scatter plot, what you can quickly identify, guys, that there are some particular patients, like out here on the right-hand side, that have a high paid amount and a lower risk. So it may have been a one-off encounter that caused that high paid amount. Alternatively, you see patients in the upper left portion of the chart that have a high risk score, but a lower paid amount relative to the rest of the population. So what this indicates is these candidates may have something that is either well-managed already, and they're in care management or case management, or they may have something that could potentially blow up within the next year or two and become a big paid amount. So they may be great candidates for case and care management as well. Beyond that scatter plot, we go ahead in the next table and we break down the individual risk scores. So this is one offering that's unique to quantify in most places we've seen. A lot of population health management solutions offer a risk score. Hardly any of them give you the, the way or the method they got to that overall score. Most of them just turn out to be black boxes where your data comes in and a score comes out. Here we show line by line how we got to this total risk score for this particular member. So we can see that this member has these specific hier hierarchical condition categories, 
these specific condition categories that rolled up into the hierarchy, and then underlying these condition categories, the exact diagnosis codes that led to that roll up and led to that ultimate risk score. Beyond that, there are a few instances where different condition categories interact with one another, so that adds to the risk score. So we also show that as well. So for example, uh, for this individual, we have that uh, the condition categories of 18 and 85 interact, adding to the risk score. So that means that this patient has diabetes, and it looks like code 85 is congestive heart failure, and those two together um, aren't just the sum of all parts. Uh, you know, they add an additional risk score to it when combined. So being able to see that most granular breakdown of the total risk score really helps to address uh, the patient needs and helps prepare um, the system to be able to handle um, very risky patients. So moving on from this analytics dashboard, we'll move into the operations dashboard. And here we can get all the detailed information on a particular patient. And you may have seen I copied uh, the, the patient code from, I, I copied the patient code from the most risky patient um, in the member risk dashboard. And we can simply highlight that ID here, select go, and now everything refreshes for that particular member. So this is the individual we were just looking at with the highest risk, and now we can see some of the reasons behind it and what they've been in, uh, what they've been to see a healthcare provider for recently. So up top, we quickly summarize the data again. We look at the overall paid amount, the varying claim types, so primarily medical claims, their total claims, and their number of chronic conditions. Uh, beyond that, we take a look at their individual information. So it's a 54-year-old female. Uh, and see how long they've been enrolled in the system. After that, we can get a quick breakdown of the diagnosis codes that lead to these high costs. The providers where, where the, the paid amount is being spent, along with the place of service, if we have that information. In each of these tables, in addition to changing the metric, so right now I'm looking at paid amount, but I may also want to look at it from a claims perspective. I am allowed. To, I can quickly change the metric um, by sl selecting from the drop-down menu. In addition, any of these, I can flip over to a table and see more information. So now I see that this particular patient visited this provider 118 times over the course uh, since we've been tracking them, so two years' worth of data. So over two years, they've visited this provider 118 times. So if we were using this to try to look at it from a hospital network perspective, we could see if they were going to this provider and if they were in network or out of network. And if they were out of network, we could immediately recognize that this is a need for the, the patient that we don't have currently, but that we could fill, especially with the utilization rate um, of this particular provider. Beyond that, we can see their most recent medical claims. So these are sorted by end date. So most recently, uh, they had visited the provider for diabetes. Um, you know, before that, um, it looks like they're missing the diagnosis code, uh, but prior to that, right, closed fracture of a foot. So we can see all the recent reasons why they've come in to see various healthcare providers and really look similar, similar to how we did uh, at the beginning when we drilled down to see if any of those highest cost encounters are some of the most recent encounters. Beyond that, we can also go to an additional sub-tab, which highlights the pharmacy data that we have. So here there's not a breakdown by diagnosis code or place of service or provider as there was previously, but we simply have the latest claims from the pharmacy. So we can see exactly which medications they're taking, and we can begin to get an idea of uh, if they've been taking them effectively or not based on their refill rates um, as well. Another great feature that we wanted to highlight within Yellowfin is the ability to share data. Uh, within healthcare, and especially within population health management, that becomes critical. So some of the features that Yellowfin provides allowing users to share data um, are highly useful. So initially within each report, there's the ability to export it to a variety of different formats. So if someone's used to seeing something in a tabular structure, they can get a CSV or an Excel sheet, 
If someone just wants a printout, they can get a document or PDF. But almost more important than this export feature is the ability to share this with other users. So if we come into the share link, we easily have the ability to distribute it to other recipients. So for example, I could type in myself, distribute it there. I could distribute it to an admin, but any individual user that you type in, you could send this particular report across to them. In addition, you can email out the report. Once you change settings to allow people to distribute the emails, then it gives you the ability to add your recipients, um, set the subject of the email, send a message, and then determine what form you want to send this in as well. One last feature that we wanted to highlight in terms of sharing and managing your data was the ability to broadcast different reports. So within Yellowfin, they also offer the ability to come within a given report and set up a schedule for a broadcast. So if there's a particular report, a report that you look at weekly or monthly, that's very easy to set it up to send out, either distributing it through the Yellowfin application or emailing it in any sort of form that you want, whether it be the PDF, Excel, Word document, um, or CSV file. And that information would get emailed to you or distributed to you through Yellowfin at a specific time. It would run the query in the background, give the most up-to-date version of the report, and send it off. But almost more useful than that is the ability that Yellowfin has to set an alert. So here in this instance, what you can do is come in for particular reports and say that I want to set an alert to know that when a um, refill quantity for a particular uh, drug or, or pharmacy item that they're taking is greater than five. Right? That means they have the ability to refill it very frequently. I may want to keep an eye on that. So I can set it so that if any row in this particular report is greater than five, it will go ahead and send me that indication and flag, either distributing it to me or emailing it to me again. So once again, in addition to setting it from a frequency perspective, I can set it from an alert perspective, which is highly useful if you just want to go into the data when critical thresholds have been met. here. The last thing that I wanted to view in terms of sharing will allow me to go back to the storyboard that we had. Presentation again is the ability to share information directly in a presentation layer. So as we've been going through to this point, it's primarily static information. But Yellowfin also gives you the ability to present findings from a report within, again, the, the presentation there, that the layer that they offer through Storyboard. So here we have that same report that we did in the Overview tab, which allows you to look at the patient population and see who's in your, your high-cost categories. We have these same interactions here. We can come in, we can filter the report. I believe we looked at 2014 and we looked at only medical claims. So once we select go, the report changes on the fly within the presentation. We can drill into the report just as before and see the underlying data. So here we have our list of members. There's our highest cost member once more. And what we can also do is capture related information. So what we wanted to do is take a look at the patient information as well. So one second, let me actually go back and grab this member ID so we can filter for it. Go down to our patient information, and we once again come over and filter for that particular patient. We can see their diagnosis codes similar to uh, how we did in the patient information dashboard. So this is a very useful way when making presentations to combine information and make it interactive. We still have the ability here as well to flip over to a table if needed, so we can see our individual diagnoses, and we see the same type of results from this patient, right? This is the one who had sickle cell disease, and here we see that again as the highest paid amount, um, but just in presentation form. So 
so beyond that, I wanted to, to discuss really quickly how we've used this solution to drive results at a, at a community health provider. Um, so through implementing this population health solution in Yellowfin, um, this community health provider that we've been working with has been able to do three things much better than they were previously. So one is, is understand their patient population. The second is understand the risk associated with that population. And the third is being able to visually analyze member history. So for this first point, the EHR and EMR system at this local provider had the ability to look at the most granular level information for a particular patient, and it did well at that. But what they weren't able to see was an aggregated view of their entire population at once. And in addition, be able to segment through filters that, that patient population based on demographics. Once they had everything aggregated, they were also able to understand the diagnoses and chronic conditions with the highest impact, and then know which providers the patient population is utilizing most frequently, which was critical to them in their planning. Second, they were better able to understand the risk associated with the population. So they, know, they knew the risk score for each of their individual patients, which allowed them to proactively identify the most risky patients rather than waiting to be told who they are, because previously they would get reports from their claims providers um, every quarter or every six months identifying the risky patients, and they wouldn't change as frequently as they can when they're in a, a BI tool such as this. And then third, this allowed them to gain leverage in negotiations with insurance providers. So in these negotiations, the insurance providers would often come in, come in with an idea of what the risk of the population was, but the community health provider would not have an idea. So they just have to take insurance provider's word for it, but now they can go in with a clear understanding of the true risk of their patient population. Third is that they were able to visually analyze the member history, which they were, were not able to do before from a visual perspective. So they can now track patients that are in case management programs and using some of the visualizations within the patient information tab allowed them to get a quick synopsis of you know, the reason the patient, patient was visiting the healthcare provider, who they were visiting, and the place of service um, you know, for their health needs. This led their director of decision support, support to, to say at our community health center that they pride themselves on providing the highest quality of care possible to anyone in their community, regardless of their ability to pay. And the population health solution that we put forth helped them to better manage the risk in their patient population and intervene sooner rather than later to help reduce those costly episodes um, that we were able to, to identify some of that could prevent them from delivering on their commitment to the community we serve. All of this was done while providing better outcomes for the patients. So in addition to, to quickly identifying and, and you know, hopefully mitigating some of those costly encounters that may be on the horizon, it also allowed uh, better case and care management for their patients. Uh, so with that being said, um, I wanted to go ahead and uh, open this up to questions. If there are any particular parts of the solution that you wanted to see, any questions about uh, the types of information that we used, uh, feel free to, to put them into the chat box and I'll be sure to address them uh, as they come up. All right, so one question we had was, uh, what types of data files did we receive and how frequently did we receive those files, putting them into the solution? Um, so to answer that question, the types of files that are in this particular solution um, are claims files, so basically showing the encounter level information, and then the member roster files. So that's just showing demographic information about each particular members. Now these were de-identified um, when they, they came to us um, as, they, as all the information has been de-identified de um, in this demo as well. Um, and then the frequency with which they came, they were monthly batch loads. Um, so we took a report from them at the end of each month and was able to, were able to ingest that in the BI tool. Uh, that being said, if there's some sort of connection to an underlying database that you have or an underlying uh, EMR or EHR system um, that has all of the claim record information and the demographics information, Yellowfin offers a, a wide variety of tools that allow to connect to databases. Uh, so it's, it's most likely that there is uh, some form of connection. So we can have it, you know, 100% up to date matching that database. 
Uh, another question came in uh, to discuss how we calculate the risk score. Uh, so this particular risk scoring methodology we used was actually provided by CMS. It's encompassed in about a 200-page document. So it's essentially going through the weeds of the document and trying to determine, you know, which basically getting the underlying values that they assign to each age, each uh, gender, and each um, hierarchical condition category in a particular situation. And then placing that as a model, uh, we used R, which is our analytics tool. So we run all the information through R, push it back into the database, and then populate it here in Yellowfin uh, as our consumption layer. Okay. So it was a, a pre-developed model, widely accepted uh, from CMS. So it's not something that we calculated internally. Um, however, if at the particular providers they have an internal risk score uh, that they use in an internal calculation, we can certainly use that methodology as well and represent that here within the tool. Um, the next question is, how tricky is it to process and interpret data sets with multiple coding systems? Um, so this is, this is a bit tricky. Um, the, the primary factor that we've had with these multiple coding systems is switching from ICD-9 to ICD-10. Um, and what we did was gather a mapping between those two so we can look at it from either perspective right now. And as long as, if we're looking at a completely different coding system, like I noticed in the question, SNOMED CT was mentioned, um, and other international coding, as long as there is a matching underlying diagnosis, then we can map the codes together, or at least get a relatively accurate representation. And so then we could have you know, one field with the individual code, as well as one field with the text of the diagnosis. Um, so a couple of different ways to do that, but it does make it trickier than just having one particular system. Um, one more question is, do you have any data on the positive and false positive predictive value of the risk stratification algorithms? At this moment in time, we do not have any particular data points other than what the Director of Decision Support has told us that has been useful in quick, quickly identifying those patients whose healthcare costs could blow up. Um, the other thing is it's, it's a little bit tough to assign a predictive value here without a true study behind it. And that's because if you catch a patient before they blow up and provide effective care and case management, then ideally they don't blow up. So you don't know if you positively identified them and they wouldn't have blown up anyways, or if you falsely identified them and they were gonna be low paying anyways. Um, so that would require a little bit longer time horizon. And we've been to, to, truly, uh, to truly have an accuracy around that. But from the industry specialists, they seem to see an impact. So the overall paid amount has decreased, but whether or not that's specifically due to who we've identified as the high-risk patients, they believe so, but uh, no way with the limited time period of data we have to, to scientifically prove that. Um, last question is, do you have any population health epidem epidemiologists working for you? Um, we do not have that particular role working for us, but we do have uh, several people working with us. They have a strong background in healthcare, um, so they've been exposed to you know, a variety of problems in the healthcare industry um, and, and have used that knowledge to make some of our solutions such as uh, your population health management. We also have solutions around incentive linked reimbursement, provider productivity, visual, uh, visualizing physician notes, um, as well as readmissions risk. So we've put, we've put forth uh, quite a few solutions, um, all using Yellowfin as our, as our BI layer, um, based on the past experiences of those members um, on our team. Uh, um, let's see. One more question. Uh, who maintains the case management caseload and how is this data integrated? Uh, do you dictate the data structure required? Um, so for the second part of that question, do you dictate the data structure required? We have a, a specific set of fields that we look for. Now, as long as the export of data that we get has those fields, 
we can shape it and manipulate it to the structure we need. So more than a particular, we're not looking for a particular structure, just looking to make sure that we have the correct fields in order to make the full use of this solution. Um, in terms of who maintains the case management caseload, in this uh, particular instance with uh, the, the community hospitals, it was on their end. Uh, they, they maintained the caseloads and managed that using this tool that we provided. Um, there's a question, can you work with UK NHS data sets, uh, OPCS procedure codes, general practice recodes? Uh, the answer to that is, uh, although we haven't worked with those particular ones before, yes, we can, as long as they're in a similar structure where there's a code and there's an associated text field. So as long as we have that mapping between them, we can work with any type of code, medical coding data set um, available. Uh, can you process data stored in XML? Yes, uh, we're capable of doing that. Or, or JSON, <laughs> yes, sorry. I went down to that next question. I didn't recognize that they were together. Um, so when our risk scores calculated as bulk process or can the calculations be dynamic and change the activity happen? In this particular demo, they were as a bulk process. However, we can make them dynamic. Uh, so essentially we'd have a scoring system, the back end running against a particular database layer that would constantly look at new uh, changes that come in in terms of encounters and update the score as frequently as possible. Okay, uh, someone else mentioned they have, uh, you know, 3 billion records, 20 million patients, um, so huge set of data. That's not going to be a problem. Uh, Yellowfin runs uh, against Hadoop pretty well, which is a distributed file store. And that's one of the pieces that, that we use in kind of the big data platform that we have. So the size of data would not be a problem um, in, in implementing this, this population health solution. It also gives the ability to, the only problem from a BI perspective in implementing something on that many rows may come from constantly querying against the data. Uh, but one thing Yellowfin uh, provides that is somewhat unique is the ability to cache reports. So you can also say I want this report to basically run overnight and be cached so I can always see the most recent days and it's in memory at that point happening much, much quicker and not constantly querying the database. Um, another question, is this a one-size-fits-all solution or can it be customized for various hospitals or providers? Uh, it, it can be customized. Uh, that's completely an option. This is just typically the foundation that we go with uh, when we, when we uh, speak with individuals about our population health management solution, but certainly we can customize it to fit a particular provider's needs. Um, are risk scores relative risk or absolute risk? Uh, in this case, they were relative risk, but uh, you know, depending on the risk scoring system that we use, it could ultimately be either that's represented within Yellowfin. Again, that gets back to the, the recent question uh, where things are customizable within this platform. It's not, you know, if you're not comfortable using the relative risk that's provided, we can certainly put some sort of absolute risk method um, in there as well. And I'm sorry, I went through most of those relatively quickly. Uh, so please, you know, feel free to let me know if I didn't answer your question effectively. Um, Outside of that, I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, so with that, I would like to thank you all um, for your time. And I, again, appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch how you know, Quantify in, in combination with Yellowfin has worked to deal with the, the population health, work to build a population health management solution um, that can hopefully bring differentiated insights to the users.